Now that you understand how to create a Moodle page and design its basic layout through the settings and enroll students, let's take a look at how to create the content that fills the sidebars, what we call these blocks. So the blocks are options for little tools that you can include, and you need not include these tools if you don't wish. Um, so many of them, in fact most of them, you can delete at any time that you want. I've included a variety of different blocks on this page to show you what you might be able to offer to your students, and more exist than the ones that I have offered here. So let's take a look at uh, some of the offerings. Um, uh, th this is a calendar, of course, and in a calendar you can upload different events. Uh, upcoming events will show you what's coming up on the calendar. Uh, people will tell you who's participating. And I can look here at different users that are loaded into this page. And you can see me as the designer and Sunny Student, my test student. So moving back to the sample page. Uh, some more interesting blocks are available besides just administration, my courses. Um, the RSS news feeds, for instance, is a block that will constantly update um, news feeds from different news sources. I've set it to the New York Times homepage and NPR News. And I can include a blog menu. Um, recent activity will show what's been going on with the site since the last login. This is latest news. News is uh, announcements from the, the teacher. And I can access different sorts of activities. Let's talk about how to create these, because I, I will not discuss each one in detail. Rather, I'll simply show you how to create them, and you can play with them as you wish. First, it's very important that you turn editing on. So I'm, I guarantee at some point you will fumble around the Moodle page and wonder why you can't actually access any of these blocks or make any changes. It took me a while before I remember that every time I want to work with Moodle, I must turn the editing on. And it's usually turned off, and this is fine, because turning it off makes the page easier to see and prevents you from making any accidental changes. So I'm turning the editing on. And once I do that, you can see that a number of commands appear. I can create blocks down here through the, the block command. And as I pull down the menu, you'll see a number of different blocks that I can create. I can create um, blank blocks, those that are customizable, through HTML here. And if I know how to program HTML, I can make an HTML block. But uh, a number of other blocks exist. So let's take a look at how you would modify a block. Once a block is created, a number of different commands appear. The arrows give you the opportunity to move blocks around. So if I wished to move this block down, I click on the down arrow, and it will move it down below the blogs. Click it down again, and it will move below the quiz results. So now news feeds is on the bottom. If I move it to the left, obviously, it finds its way to the left sidebar. If I move it to the right, it appears back on the right sidebar. The X will delete a block. So let's see which one I'll delete. Um, Upcoming events. I'll delete upcoming events. I'll delete that. And upcoming events is gone. If you deleted an event or deleted a block and you wish for that to reappear, simply go back to the block menu, upcoming events, reappears down here. I can move it back to its position to the left, up. I want to put it right below the calendar. Good. The I icon will allow you to hide blocks. So if I hide this block, then I still see it. But if I look as a student, the latest news block is now gone. So the student cannot see it. And this, of course, means that you will be able to access blocks that the students won't be able to see. Your page may be a lot busier than the student ever sees because you are hiding certain blocks or um, course content that is in development, not re ready to go yet. Um, I can also modify the material in some of these blocks, not all of them, 
Many of these are preset and they run on their own. But if I wish to modify, for instance, the news feeds, I can click on news feeds. And for the news feeds block, I can add different sorts of news feeds. I've added the New York Times and NPR. I can manage them, um, add a new URL for a news feed, uh, give some discussion about it, um, change the name of the block, whatever I'd like to do. I will not change the block at this time because it is exactly where I want it and it looks just fine. So play around with the blocks, delete them if you're not using them or hide them if you're not using them because a good Moodle site will, will keep everything nicely um, organized and, and not so visually noisy. The same access is available through the main course content on the main page. I can uh, hide a block if I wish, I can move a block up or down as I wish, and I can modify through the little hand with the pen. I can modify the title, and this is a bunch of HTML gobbledygook. I'll talk to you about that HTML um, a little bit later as I'm talking about updating pages. But I can modify block number one, I could change to block number two, what have you. I can add resources and activities. This page is pretty busy when the editing is turned on, but once you understand what these commands are, they should be fairly easy to use. And of course, you should play around with it. Access blocks, modify them, delete them, create them as you will.